So who says little kids are innocent? I have a 10 year old here that will show you the difference. Have you ever thought about what you would do if you got the chance to start your life from the start? This anime today will be about this pervert man right here who gets evicted from his home after he fails to go to his parents' funeral. Eviction? Man, his ass should have been I mean, man, instead of going to the funeral, he lies in his room just watching porn. He was afraid of getting out of the house because when he was in high school, he was bullied and forced to get naked in front of everyone. I mean, they even took pictures. Man, those nasty kids. So this gave him some serious psychological issues about going out. So staying home, playing video games, watching porn, and doing absolutely nothing just sounds like a great idea. He wasted his life. He was literally a loser. And he dies doing one good thing in his life. Rescuing some teenagers from a rushing van. He's taken to the hospital and while he's on the operation table, he hears weird language and a woman screaming. He closes his eyes and once he opens them, he finds this weird blonde guy acting strangely in front of him, along with this beautiful woman. He's reincarnated in a fantasy world. He got a second chance from the beginning as an infant with an extra advantage. His memories are preserved. His name is Rudis. It was hard for him to act as a child. I mean, every time he breastfeeds was like a dream, but weird. The woman being his mom. As he gets older, he discovers more about the world. He starts reading a book about magic, and he picks it up pretty quickly. He doesn't even have to say the spell. Rudis' parents notice his abilities and decide to get him a personal trainer for magic. So say hello to Roxy Migurdia. Rudis decides to work hard and make the second chance count. Rudis spends the next months training magic with Roxy, even at night. And man, I thought that as a pervert in his previous life, he's gonna try to do something, but even as a kid, he wasn't able to. On the day of his five-year-old birthday party, Roxy declares that she has nothing more to teach him and will hold his graduation exam. She takes Rudis out, which was the most complex problem he had but he managed to overcome this issue and also succeed in his final exam, which meant that Roxy will go bye-bye. After losing his fear of leaving home thanks to Roxy, Rudis starts playing outdoors by himself until he rescues a half-elf boy named Sylph from a group of bullies. But when he gets home, his father screams and hits him because he hit one of the bullies with a water ball. But with a 20 years experience in making excuses, Rudis was more than capable of dealing with an angry parent. Rudis notices that Sylph is beautiful as a boy so he becomes friends with him. In the future, Sylph will be like a babe magnet. He starts teaching Sylph about magic. Sylph is also capable of casting magic without spells. One day, they're surprised by a rainstorm, so they go to Rudis' house and he asks Sylph to take his wet clothes off. Sylph refuses, but Rudis takes them off anyways. And guess what? Little Sylph has no penis. As it appears, he's a girl named Sylphite. The Grey Red family is happy upon knowing that Zenith is pregnant again and that Rudis will be a big brother. But I thought there was something weird about Zenith and Paul. I mean, their life can't be that perfect. And way to go, Paul. Confirm my suspicions. As the maid Lilia revealed that she's pregnant too. And guess Who's the father? Don't say Rudis. I know he was a pervert in his previous life, but he's only seven. So, all eyes on you, Paul. Paul admits to having an affair with Lilia, but due to Rudis' helping her, because she didn't rat on him when she found his hidden treasure, Lilia's panties, and was able to convince Zenith to let Lilia stay and blame it all on his father, the two ladies give birth to a really cute girls named Nora and Aisha. Rudis considers leaving to study at the Ronoa Magic Academy after receiving a letter from Roxy encouraging him to. But Sylphite does not want him to leave her, and he decides to look for a job to pay for her fees as well. Man, if I didn't know any better, I would have said that Rudis is a caring person. But I only know he only thinks of Sylphite as a future hot girl project. While training with his father, this beast woman Gisselaine shows up, and Paul entrusted her with Rudis. Paul seemed like a really good guy, but man, he was a player and knows his way with the ladies. 
As they're leaving the village, he reads a letter from Paul saying that he got a job for him, which teaching a little girl for five years. In the city of Roa, Rudis meets Philip Greyrat, who's also the mayor and his father's cousin and is to teach Philip's daughter, Eris. She was a violent, fist-using type of girl, and she totally smashed the shit out of Rudis. Rudis, along with Philip, came up with a plan to fake Rudis and Eris being kidnapped. But unfortunately, one of Philip's men actually kidnapped the two, and they had a bad time running away if it wasn't for Kishelaine's help, who, by the way, was a total badass, and sliced them bad guys with an ultrasonic speed. Eventually, Eris is convinced to take Rudis as her teacher. Rudis is teaching magic, math, and literacy to both Eris and Gishelaine. Yeah, the muscular beast woman. While Gishelaine teaches the two kids swordsmanship. But man, like father, like son, Rudis is all about the panties. Eris is turning 10 years old, so Rudis allows Eris' dance teacher to take some of his time, which is a waste, of course, because that girl is all about fighting and not dancing. Rudis makes use of his free time to learn other languages with the help of Roxy and Gishling. Eris does not improve at all, and on the day of the party, Rudis comes to the rescue. After the party, Rudis meets Eris' grandfather, Saros, who sees a strange ball of light in the sky and fears it could be a bad sign. I mean, something that appears out of thin air is getting bigger every time. Not a good sign, my friend. Two years later, Eris and her family hold a birthday party for Rudis, and apparently, Rudis is from a gray rat branch of the family, whose head is his uncle. So there's some sort of family power struggle, and Rudis didn't want anything to do with it. So he denied Philip's offer to marry Eris. Rudis gets a top quality magic wand. He wanted his family to be present, but Paul is busy killing monsters due to their increased activity. Rudis comes back to his room and finds another present waiting for him. Eris. He tries to have sex with her, which she didn't mind at first. Yes, a 10-year-old having sex with a 12-year-old. Someone call family services here. Eris pushes Rudis away and tells him to wait five more years. Why didn't I make such a promise when I was little? I was busy eating mud. Yes, I ate mud as a 10-year-old. A few days later, a huge cloud of mana forms in the sky, and the legendary hero Perugius sends one of his men, Arumanfi, to investigate. And guess who he found at the scene of the crime? Rudis, Eris, and luckily, Gishelaine, who defeated them and swore their innocence with her name when suddenly, that big ball of light exploded! Inside his dreams, and looking like his past self, Rudis has a short conversation with an unknown being who calls himself the Human God. He tells Rudis that he's in the middle of a demon continent, and to trust the man sitting with him when he wakes up. And it was a hard one, because the person sitting next to him has a green hair and a scarlet jewelry in the middle of his forehead. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the kind of super Dean tripe. Ruijerd here decides to help Rudis and Eris to get back home, and he takes them to a village full of Roxy lookalike people, and they meet her parents. Ruijerd tells Rudis the true story about the Super Dean tripe and how demon god Laplace tricked them with these crazy powerful spears, which by the way turns you into a crazy lunatic. Shh. Rudis decides to help Ruijer to gain his tribe good name while he helps get them back home. So, it's a win-win for both. The three arrive at the city of Rikarisu, but the guards are looking for someone called Dead End. You wanna guess who that is? Ding, ding, ding! It's Ruijer. So Rudis makes him dye his hair. They became a group of adventurers called Dead End, which Rudis thought would be a good way to improve the Super Dean tribe name, but as nobodies, they're not allowed to take tasks with good payment, so they're stuck with missing cat missions. They find the cat, but man, if this is what a cat looks like, I really don't want to know what tigers look like. They figure out that another group of adventurers kidnapped the so-called cat, so Ruizer takes the head of their leader after he kicked Rudis. I mean, you can see where the Super Dean got their bad reputation. You can't kill your way through everything, Ruizer. Man. 
Brutus comes up with a plan with the other team to spare the lives in exchange for them promoting dead end, good reputation, and their B rank missions. After the mana explosion, all of Paul's family members are missing except for Norn, and he asks for his contacts to make search parties to find them. Meanwhile, Rudis took a quest to kill an unknown creature in a forest. They ran into two parties, one of which was made by kids. Yeah, these monsters are kids. The kids team is attacked, so Rurijurd, who loves kids, the good way that is, wants to help them. But Rudis had a last minute rescue plan, but ching! One of the kids' heads flew off and Rudis stood shocked. Ruizard rescues them and yells at Rudis for letting one of the kids die. The other team is being attacked by the mysterious creature, which is this big red cobra. Anyway, Dead End tries to rescue them. They kill the cobra easily, but they were late. They all died. The three got back to the city where they meet this... I want to say a horse, but from his actions, I, I think a donkey will be a good fit. The donkey threatens to reveal their plan to swab missions with the other team. Ruizard notices that Rudis is willing to protect Eris no matter what, so he washes the dye off his hair and reveals himself as Super Dian. Of course, everyone went crazy and ran away. He threatens the donkey if he does anything, he will kill him. And to complete the threat, he scars him on the face with his spear. And that's it. The first season ends. Rudis and Ruizard agree to do what's necessary to get Eris back home and get the good name of Super Dian Tripe.